All right, we're coming up on 4 a.m. if I can read a watch right, and Jim LaRue is going into another stage of his painting strategy here. You probably heard that noise. I want to show you the apparatus he has brought here. So he has, I got to step back because he, he brought some equipment here. Everybody else you know, brought a, a case of paints and some other stuff. So if I can come without tripping on wires or an air compressor or anything else, what have you got going on over here? So I brought a, uh, it's an airbrush cage, basically uh, it's a studio grade uh, filtration device with integral lights and a paint catch box. Mmm, jargon. <laughs> all the jargon and all the things. Um, realistically what it allows you to do is, is take a, an airbrush system with you wherever you want to go. We can paint inside, um, you can run a, an air duct out a window, anything like that, so you basically just get the if you're painting with toxic fume or toxic paint or anything like that, it pushes it out the window, or um, you can push uh, all the leftover paint dust and whatnot, all the paint particles out of your breathing air. But instead, you are putting them into a cardboard box. I'm pumping it through three different filters into a cardboard box just so the paint doesn't get up in the air. We appreciate that. My pleasure. Because no doctor has recommended huffing paint. <laughs> Ever. All right, so now with your, now that's just gray plastic, yep. unbased. So I just started, uh, I'm running um, Badger's new Style and Res um, self-leveling primer through an airbrush. This is a Badger 100LG with a, um, an old school Badger compressor, so nothing super fancy. Um, but, so I just got paint on this. I'm gonna let this sit and dry while I finish working my way through it. And when you guys rolled up, I'm about halfway through priming my plasma gun. All right. So why not just a can of spray paint? Uh, so to get the finish that I'm looking for, I'm gonna prime it in black, go back and reprime it uh, with another Vallejo surface primer in German gray, which is a uh, the Germans have their own gray now? Yeah, it's a desaturated cool gray. So I'll take that and I'll work that up as my base color. Uh, base so black color. and then gray. So it's black and gray. It's a cool gray. It's just the tones of blue into it. So I'll wind up with a, uh, a, a cool looking, tonally speaking, a cool looking black with some value into it instead of just black out of a rattle can or if you just paint it black. Cool as in not a warm color, but cool a... Cool as in not a warm color, okay. as a cool color. With a, a, the, tint, the hint of blue. So the, the, a hint of blue to it. So okay. it'll be a lot, of, uh, a lot of layers of blue and black. I'll finish up with a candy coat of black, so it'll, it'll take a lot of that, uh, the white out of it. A candy coat? A candy coat. So a candy coat is a really thin, thin, thin layer of whatever color you put over it. Like a candy shell. Kind of like a candy shell. Um, another term for it is you're just filtering. So you uh, use one color to change the hue of the color beneath it. Okay. Yep. All right. So, what I heard was that it gives you a little more control and an ability to mix some paints as desired? Exactly. And okay. then it allows me to, uh, doing it through an airbrush, it allows me to get uh, smoother transitions and smoother blends quicker. And whereas a can of spray paint can give you a quick base coat or primer, yep. you can actually do your primer, your layers, and blending all with the same elaborate tool system. Yes. All righty. Well, we look forward to seeing more of this finished product. We got a pair of robotic legs there that look like they were done. Yep. All right. So, Jim LaRue with his airbrush apparatus, which surprisingly is safe to use indoors, I hope. And uh, we'll see some more of the finished product later. Thank you much.